Using a project-based flipped approach to teaching requires really strong lesson planning. By the time you get to this video, you've already read my four D's of lesson planning in the module three homepage. Let's go over them in a little more detail, however. Step one is to define the outcome. This is known as backward design. You have to start with the end in mind. Your lesson planning is a little like taking a road trip to a specific destination for a wedding. Step one is that specific destination. While it can be fun to take a road trip with no destination in mind or take off without a plan of how you will get there, neither of those makes, neither of those makes for a productive classroom environment. Classroom time is valuable, and to use it well, you need a firm destination in mind. To help guide us, let's say the curricular outcome is what is the role of culture in some key historical events. Step two is determining how the outcome will be measured. For the road trip, this would be arrival at the destination in time for the wedding. How will you know students have arrived at the outcome if you cannot see it and measure it? Saying students will understand something is too fuzzy. We cannot see understanding, although we often can see confusion, and understanding is not really measurable. We could see and measure students defining the term culture. Could we measure student analysis of the role of culture in the start of World War II? Yes, although a rubric might help with determining the degree to which a student did the analysis. In other words, to what degree did they meet the measurement? Writing good, observable, measurable learning objectives takes time, but it will be worth it as you plan your projects. Step three is the learning activities, which will result in the observable, measurable actions defined in the objective. For our road trip, this would be the route plan and maybe hotel reservations along the way. In project-based learning, this is the heart of what students will be doing in the classroom. What activities can they do so they understand culture well enough to define it? What activities such as research and discussion might be needed for them to understand the various cultures and how they interacted as World War II started. Obviously, research and discussion are still loose terms. Your activities will be more specifically planned. Maybe a Venn diagram or mind map of the various cultures involved in World War II would be part of student research. Which brings us to step four. The Venn diagram or mind mapping software tool would be part of what you need in your lesson plan to carry out this project. Step four is determining what tools and specific teaching strategies will be used to implement the activities from step three. To be honest, step four is what most teachers, especially new teachers, consider to be lesson planning. What worksheet will they do on Wednesday in math? That isn't lesson planning. The worksheet is just a tool. What you are about to learn is that the planning process and determining the background building and creating any media which is part of it are the aspects of project-based teaching and flipping which take the most time. Once the project is implemented in the classroom, if you've done your planning really well and established appropriate student expectations, the students won't need much from you until it is time to evaluate the projects. I tell you this so you don't get overwhelmed with how much time the planning is taking you. That is normal, and it's going to be so worth it. Trust me, I had eighth, graders, eighth grade students sneaking out of other classes to do their projects about ancient history. If I could make Babylonia, honestly, Babylonia, that engaging, motivating, and compelling to eighth graders, you can make any lessons for your classroom equally interesting to your students.